use of the points where he's actually able to shoot for a short period of time. Now we've got a forbidden archive, so the Necron Lord is going to be about, uh, and there he is there, just getting up off the ground. Uh, Solar Flare as well, so very, very useful ability for those of you who play StarCraft, uh, Brood War, and aren't that familiar with uh, Dawn of War. Sol um, Dawn of War Soulstorm, that is. The uh, Solar Flare ability is very similar to the Disruption, disruption Web of the Corsair in, in StarCraft, and uh, units underneath that Solar Flare can't use their ranged weapons, and that's so handy for the Necrons, because Necrons are often faced with a big uh, big pile of guys shooting at them from range and just doing a standoff rather than uh, allowing the Necrons to come to them quickly uh, by engaging in, in, in close combat, and that Solar Flare really is great for countering that. Looks like we've got three full squads of tactical uh, Marines back there, and uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they start upgrading some, some heavy weapons very soon. We've got the Necron Lord teleporting over, so very nice. Uh, disrupting the Space Marines uh, gives the Necron Warriors a chance to advance. And the Marines pulling back once again. As you can see, the Necron Lord phasing out of reality there so that the uh, Marines can't fire at him. Very useful ability. So it looks like, uh, as, as you know, I mean the, the Forbidden Archive allows the Necron Lord to pick three different war gear abilities. He's already chosen uh, Zolfler, and there's the Necron Warriors. Pulling out doesn't feel, feel that he can face the Space Marines just yet. And the Space Marines starting to pack down some heavy bolters, so that would probably be the reason why the Necrons wouldn't really be able to advance in the face of that. Even got some rocket launchers, as you can see there. But just back to the original thought about the Necron Lord's uh, Forbidden Ar Archive choices. He can have up to three. He's already taken Solar Flare. He's taken the, the, the phase shifting ability. And I uh, wouldn't be surprised if he takes the Phylactery as well, which is the ability that gives him a, a greater health regeneration. So there you have it. Uh, Space Marines heading down back to this sort of causeway over at the southwest and recapturing some points. The Necron's leaving their base through the causeway in the center. You can see there's a big chasm there uh, full of craters separating the two armies. And uh, we've got a Wraith heading out, very useful for tying up troops in combat, but they tend to be weak unless you start phase shifting them as well. Uh, Chaos is uh, going to be doing that, as you can see there. They, they're invulnerable while they're, they're in that state, and uh, that becomes really handy because then uh, you, give, you give the Wraith an opportunity to stand really close to the Marines, but now he's shifted out again and the Space Marines are targeting it. They should be able to uh, eliminate that Wraith fairly quickly. There it is now. I've got the Necron Lord also disrupting things, so... Unfortunately, Chaos's play here is, is preventing Anesti from really sitting back and uh, firing at those Necron Warriors with heavy bolters and getting some kills. So what he's doing here is he's actually retreating from the Necrons, but he's retreating directly through the Necron base and, oh my gosh, being smacked down by a listening post. Uh, well, actually, the better term for that would be the level 2, uh, level two obelisk. And uh, this doesn't look that great for Anesti because he's kind of boxed in here. We've got the Necron Lord chasing after. Another solar flare right in the middle of the, of the space marine, so they're forced to move again. Uh, so that's actually nice timing there by Chaos. Totally getting rid of the Space Marines, and he's got another squad of Necrons flanking around from the other side, boxing the Marines in, so he's just going to be getting hits here no matter what. Uh, building a second Monolith as well, so his economy is really going to be shooting out, uh, and he's going to be able to build quite a lot of uh, Necron units later on. Uh, just to remind people, Necron Warrior Squads are actually free. Not that he'll be you know, pumping Necron Warrior Squads uh, throughout the later game, but he'll be able to actually get Wraiths, Destroyers, Flayed Ones at a pretty fast rate if he actually upgrades that second Monolith. But uh, the Space Marines have actually entrenched themselves in a bit of a, a tougher position back here. They've actually put some range between themselves and their, their enemies, and uh, Heavy Bolts have started to be chucking it out pretty, pretty, pretty rapidly. Again, we've got another phased Wraith in the midst of it. So they're going to be so long before, yeah, get snapped out like that. And uh, the Marines look to be solid, solidly in a, a good position once again. Force Commander seems to have added himself a, a hammer, which is surprising because I haven't really seen him in combat very much. But I guess he's, he's expecting to have to be in combat at some stage. There's another Wraith going down. Looks like this Marine on the side of the cliff has got suction boots or something because he's standing on, on a 45 degree angle. Look at this. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I guess it's just Space Marine power armor does all sorts of wacky things. Anyway, there's another Wraith. That Wraith seems to just keep keeps on getting back off the, off the field of battle and, and repairing itself because uh, the Space Marines have probably killed it several times now. Necrons getting ready to start their advances. Quite a lot of them back there. The Necron Lord is uh, just chomping on some Space Marine fire up the front here, but he's a pretty durable unit. Quite difficult to take that uh, that guy down. And teleporting right to the back here, disrupting yet another Space Marine squad, particularly one with uh, more of the heavy, heavy bolters. Necron Warriors are, are trudging along the causeway, 
trying to get in range. Uh, the Space Marines, an SD here is pulling back the Space Marines wisely. Doesn't want to stay in the same position for too long, otherwise those those Nikon Warriors are really going to devastate them. Taking a look back here, we've still got the two, yeah, haven't really added any new buildings. We've got some land speeders now for the Space Marines, so this is this looks cool. Uh, chugging away with heavy, uh, well, assault cannons and storm bolters, shall we say. And uh, this is quite a cool choice uh, for the for the meantime. There won't really be an effective unit for a very long time, but for now, land speeders are really going to be able to give give the uh, Space Marines a lot of firepower. Uh, just until the, the Immortals show up. Once Chaos is able to get some Immortals, then that's going to be really tough. Land Spitters aren't really going to cut it, but for now, it looks like uh, Anesti's doing a great job here, just mowing down the Necrons with these Land Spitters. We've got a couple of Space Marine squads further back out in the field, uh, just getting rid of Necrons left and right. Necron Lord is going to... Oh, no, didn't quite take out the Land Spitter, but it's very low on health. Four Land Spitters swinging around to the, uh, the side here. Looks like we're going to fly around the, uh, the southwest and uh, start firing at that, uh, that obelisk. That obelisk uh, is going to be providing the Necrons with a little bit more uh, build speed for their second monolith, so if Anesti can take that, I'll be handy. At the moment, he's just trying to gun down some scarabs there. That listing post, sorry, that obelisk, I keep mixing up the names, obelisk has been upgraded to level 3, so that's even starting to fire some Gauss uh, turret arc uh, type fire, some, some lightning arcs, some green lightning, whatever you want to call that, but uh, Ooh, nice shot here with the solar fair in the, in the, in the foreground, but... Alright, so the Necron Warriors <laughs> advancing down through the, the middle here. We've got a triple group of Space Marines, all upgraded with, with uh, heavy bolters, rocket launchers, flayed ones rising out of the ground. We still haven't got support from the... Oh, there they are, the land speed is flying from behind, but unfortunately they've, they've flown right next to some Immortals. Bad choice there from the, the land speeders. And those, look at these Immortals, they're just gunning down, totally annihilated, reduced those land speeders to smoldering carnage, uh, debris there basically. And uh, unfortunately this, this uh, Space Marine squad out in the open here is being chopped down by Necrons. We've got a, we've got a Dreadnought, uh, this is going to survive for a lot longer, so this should be able to tank for an SD for some period of time. But I'm just quite worried about this because in the background we've actually got Immortals starting to fire at it and the Dreadnought's already down to two thirds health. Uh, it's not going to be able to su survive for as long as a Dreadnought normally would against just infantry. Uh, and uh, things are actually starting to look troubling for an SD. He was looking strong not too long ago, but now the Necrons are in his base, starting to fire away at some of the, the more important buildings. I think he's pulling back with the Space Marines, just trying to stay out of range of that main mob. We've even got the Immortals starting to arrive, so if the Immortals start picking off buildings, that's really going to be trouble. Here are all of the Space Marine squads back here, and in fact, it's the Necron Lord that's taking all the damage. Firing another Solar Flare, so he's just been really great with his timing for these Solar Flares. Just preventing the Space Marines from doing damage every time they're in a good, uh, advantageous position to start firing. 